Season 1 of My Hero Academia does not mess around. Izuku Midoriya is constantly thrown into tough situations that push him near his breaking point. It's established at the very start that Izuku is the weakest character in the story. In a world where most people are born with some sort of quirk that makes them capable of incredible feats, Izuku is quirkless, which makes him the equivalent of Man Rider. This changes in Episode 3, however, when All Might agrees to transfer onto him his one-for-all ability that allows him to channel superhuman levels of power. Situations like this happen all the time in Shonen. Even in Hunter x Hunter, a show where the characters often struggle to attain a new threshold of power, there is a moment where the two protagonists are essentially just handed a power-up because they need it right then and there. In Gon and Kilua's case, however, they just happen to have an incredible potential for growth. If you would put Gon and Kilua into a room with 100 other fighters of their age, they would probably probably rank in the top 5, if not higher in terms of ability. Izuku doesn't have that luxury. Izuku is not a naturally gifted fighter. He's just an average human being. He has no hidden strength. He's just a fanboy, and in a world where almost everyone else is a superhero, this puts Deku at rock bottom. Izuku isn't in as much of a time crunch as Gon and Kirua were during the Heavens Arena arc, but given his abilities, he might as well be. Ever since he was little, Izuku's goal was to make it into the nation's top high school for superheroes. With the entrance exam fast approaching, however, Deku has no time to relax. Because Izuku is an unconditioned shrimp, however, Izuku can't simply receive this power. He first has to condition his body into a proper vessel that is capable of even hosting hosting this ability, let alone using it. This results in a 10-month training session where Izuku is physically draining himself day in and day out. No days off, no resting period, just full throttle, non-stop work, on top of his studies. Keep in mind that this is three episodes in, guys. We don't see development like this in most other popular shonen action series. In most cases, the protagonist is either already a cut above the rest, or he just happens to have incredible potential, or a specific condition that allows him to channel power hidden deep within him. Deku has to bust his ass to earn his power, and he knows it. There is a brief intermission during the training montage where Deku's body succumbs to exhaustion. He collapses as All Might scolds him for not adhering to his pre-established training schedule. All Might says that if Deku overworks himself, it will have the opposite effect. That is to say, it not only won't help Deku become stronger, but it will actually weaken him and prevent him from achieving the power that he needs before the exam deadline. This is usually the point in the story where the hero has some sort of mental breakdown. He's been pushing himself well beyond his limits, but even that just isn't enough. Doubt starts to take control until somebody else, usually the hero's friend or idol, does something really inspirational that reinvigorates the hero to keep going. Instead of that, however, when All Might asks Deku if he really wants to pass the exam, Deku replies, I do, but I can't just get in. I have to work a lot more than other people, or I won't be able to catch up. I want to become the greatest hero, just like you. This leads All Might to make Deku's schedule even more rigorous than it was before. So when we get this shot of Deku screaming his lungs out on the pile of trash that he had to move off of this entire beach, it's not only badass, it's inspiring. This kid was scraped off the bottom of the barrel at the start, and in just two episodes, we see him transform his nearly impossible dream into a reality. That is an unbelievable turnaround for someone who, just 10 months before, had absolutely no shot at making the cut. Deku even acknowledges this when he says, I feel like I'm cheating. But as All Might replies in his head, Deku worked for his power. What he has done can hardly be considered cheating. But the show doesn't end there. Even after busting his ass, Deku has only improved himself from 0% to 50% at best. He can now host one for all, but a 5 out of 10 is still leagues beneath a 10 out of 10, and that's what Deku is up against. He isn't just aiming for an average school, he's aiming for the best school. So he's still the underdog when he enters the exam. As if he wasn't limited enough, he doesn't know how to properly use his power. So when he's forced to bust it out in the entrance exam, he obliterates both of his legs and his right arm. He passes, and he doesn't even land at the bottom of the scoreboard. But as we are quickly reminded in episode 5, Deku is way out of his league. Upon arriving to the academy, Deku is given the strictest homeroom teacher he could have possibly gotten. Shota Aizawa. Imagine being forced to take a test on the first day of school and being told, by the way, if you get the lowest score on the class, you're expelled. You could get a 99%, but if everyone else got a 100%, Bye bye Time to find another profession. Naturally, Deku doesn't stand a chance unless he uses his new quirk, but as we established during the exam, 
Doing so would shatter his bones. Aizawa is wise to this, and he calls Deku out on how useless his power would be during an actual crisis. He could take one thing down and become completely incapacitated. Being a hero isn't all about destroying the enemy. If you're trapped in a burning building, for example, killing the mastermind behind it isn't going to stop the building from crumbling, and if you can't save the people trapped inside that building, what kind of a hero are you? This once again puts Deku in a corner. He can't use his quirk without destroying his body, but if he doesn't use his quirk, he's going to be Spelled. Imagine driving a car for the first time, only instead of a gas pedal that allows you to gradually increase or decrease your speed, you can sit at zero, or you can drive at 150 miles per hour. Those are your only two options. What happens next is another close contender for my favorite scene from season one. The ball throw serves as Deku's final chance to use his quirk effectively. All of his classmates could land at least one amazing result, so if Deku can't smash this task out of the park, his dream is over. Right before he pulls out his quirk, Aizawa gets right in his face and tells him that he will not become a hero with his power. In his eyes, Deku has zero potential. In response to this, Deku channels all of his power into a single finger and smashes a high score. As Aizawa watches on, Deku, fighting back the pain of his broken finger, turns around and says, I can still move. After Aizawa had publicly cut Deku down as a failure, Deku proved him wrong. How badass is that? I can fortunately say that I've never suffered a major injury before, but I know what a broken finger feels like. I also know what it's like to ignore pain in the face of my peers, so maybe I'm biased towards this scene, but watching Deku defiantly stand his ground with tears in his eyes is one of the most badass scenes I've ever witnessed. I have so much more to say about this show, but I'd rather not be here all day. If you'd like to hear me say more about My Hero Academia or about anime in general, be sure to share this video with anyone you can, and follow me on Twitter at MathWiz97X. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep on YouTubing.